to ask you a further question on this, by the way. This is pretty much the last example. Like, I mean, these are the scenarios where you, need, you now know all of the scenarios where you need to divide up into different integrals and either combine them or just treat them separately, maybe add a plus or a minus sign. I have a question for you. See this, um, this setup here? We didn't find these point of, points of intersection because we only needed the x values. But the points of intersection are actually very easy to find. What are they? Just look at the look one, at the functions. One, one, it's one one, one and four four, right? Because they both they both lie on this line. Okay, y equals x. All right. Now, one of the reasons why I picked out this example is because well, everything's positive. Everything's easy to deal with, so it's it's quite clear what's going on. Okay. But imagine I took this whole situation, right? And instead of this line and this line, if I took both and I moved them both down, like say somewhere a bit icky, like say maybe two units. Okay. Now if I move these down two units, let's do a really simple drawing of what this will look like. Okay. Okay. In fact, a cheat way you can do this is to draw the same um, lines but leave off the horizontal axis and then just move it up two units. Okay. You're going to get something like this, right? Here we are, this is moved down. And then we're going to get something like, one's going to be above and one's below. So Something like that, okay? Now, this is messier, right? This is a little more interesting. Because now, if I think about, for instance, um, this first integral here, this one up here. Wait, what are we finding in that one? Okay, um, if I'm still interested in finding the area between the two curves, okay? So in other words, this spot in here, okay? When I think about that first integral, this is gonna be a little messier, right? Watch. What's going to happen when I evaluate this integral? I'm not going to get a trapezium, am I? What am I going to get? Uh, not one frame. I'm going to get two triangles, aren't I? Like I'm going to get this guy, yeah, and this guy. That's a bit gross. Usually to handle this area, right, I would say, okay, consider that one. Slap a minus sign in the front. Then consider this one, and you can add those two together, right? The same thing will happen when I consider the parabola. Watch what happens. I'm going to get, let's have a look. Sorry? Wait, what? Isn't it just that little triangle? Not the whole thing. Which little triangle? If I go from one to four. Yeah, if you're evaluating one to four, isn't it those two triangles? Yeah, it is. What? I'm, I'm considering an area that's bounded to the x-axis, right? So I start at one. And all the way here, going up to the x-axis, everything's negative, right? All these negative areas. And then as, cr as cross over here, I'm still bounded to the x-axis. So now all these areas are positive. Is that okay? Imagine the, again, maybe this will help. Again, think about those rectangles that I'm actually adding up. These guys, right? They're all these vertical things, okay? So I'm pretty sure I'll end up with these two, um, these two green triangles, okay? What area will I get when I evaluate the parabola from 1 to 4? Hmm. You'll get like the inside area. I'm still going to get, well, this is going to get a bit complicated, right? So there's 1, and there's 4, right? You can see for a large part of it, I'm going to get a part that again is underneath the axis. Do you see that? That's the part that's underneath the axis, and then it crosses over, and you'll get this part here. Now, this looks like a mess, doesn't it? This looks like my brain hurts. Like even looking at my diagram, it looks pretty messy, okay? Um, where is the area that I'm interested in? Like it's kind of this one and kind of that one. How does it all work, okay? Now, here's my question to you, right? How do I get from this diagram? Like what transformation did I apply to get from this diagram to that one? What did I do? I just moved downwards. I just translated. Okay, so what does your intuition say about how this area should be related to that area? It should be, it should be the same. Like I've just taken the same area and I've moved it to a different spot, right? Do you agree with that? Okay, now here's the thing, right? It is exactly the same because it is the same area and it's really easy to see how they're going to be identical without messing about with any of this positive or negative business, okay? Watch carefully. What integrals am I going to do, right? I'm still going to be integrating, here's my area, from one to four, okay? Now, what's the, um, what is this higher function? What is its new, um, new equation? X it's not y equals x, it's x minus two. minus two, okay? So I'm integrating from one to four. My first integral will be x minus two. You okay with that? Now, what about this guy? What is its equation? 
minus it's going to be that one, right? X minus 2 all squared. But I've also moved it down 2. Okay? Now, therefore, my second integram will be take away, all right, get ready, lots of brackets, okay? I'll put some, I'll put some curly braces in just for fun, okay? X minus 2 all squared, right? Minus 2. And then square bracket to finish off. Now look, look really carefully, right? Without dealing with any of this positive or negative business, okay? Can you see from one to four? You're subtracting, there's a minus two there, because of course we moved it down. But there's another minus two right there. This is a little, a little bit like when we were evaluating the primitive, and no matter what constant you put there, right? I could take it down 200 units if you like, and you'll have a minus 200 there, and a minus 200 there. Okay, and everything would be negative, but when you take the difference, they will exactly cancel. You see that? So you're going to end up with that minus 2 and that minus 2 cancelling, which leaves you back with this, which is the original integral we worked out, right? That's still going to be, fingers crossed, 4 and a half units squared. Okay, yeah. How do you see that though? Like, if, I, if you didn't give us that and that was just what we got, yeah, how sure. Would you Okay, so here's, here's what, I would, um, what I would say to you, right? Um, remember how, and this is how I was trying to point out before and put big lights around it. If you've got an area that's between two curves, no matter where the curves are, all above the axis, kind of halfway between, or even everything below the axis, everything being negative, okay? Here's actually the genius thing about integrals covering negatives as areas, right? I can still take the difference between two negatives and they'll still be positive, right? The area you get out the end will still be a positive number, okay? So all you need to know is which one is on top and which one is below. That's all you need. And then you take the difference, okay? Yes? So is that one of those situations where diagrams don't help? <laughs> um, it's one of those situations where if you use a diagram, well, a diagram is a tool, right? And just like any tool, if you use a tool poorly, just like using integration poorly, it will send you down the garden path or chop your leg off, okay? So yeah, and that's part of why I was trying to, um, I was trying to show you how messy it gets, but the fact that integration just sort of takes care of it. This is actually the tremendous advantage. It was kind of a pest before, that like below the axis, I don't want that to be negative. That's really annoying. I have to slap a minus sign in the front. But actually, it's great that it takes into account the negatives and doesn't break a sweat. It'll get the same area wherever that area is.